Hello everyone, Dr. H. Today I'm going to introduce the relationship between some hearing problems and their corresponding locations and causes in our ear. Last time we introduced the three parts of ear, outer ear, middle ear, and inner ear. If we have problem with outer ear, for example, we have some blockage here, of course we cannot hear the incoming sound. Like if we have block here, sometimes the newborn baby has some blockage there at the entrance of the outer ear. Then that baby needs a surgery to reopen the ear canal. And if we have problem with our eardrum here, your eardrum, I have a friend. He took a flight. Then after he two two days after he took the flight. He experienced a pain and a hearing loss. What happened? He had a eardrum rupture. The rupture was caused by the rapid fluctuation of air pressure during takeoff. So once we have a rupture on the eardrum, we can have a restoration by an ENT doctor to repair fully the eardrum. After repair, my friend recovered 100%. So that was the issue caused by the rupture of eardrum. What will happen if you have issues in inner ear? In inner ear, we have two portions. One is called semicircular canals. Portion two is called cochlear. Portion one, semicircular canals are for balancing. Portion two, cochlear, is for hearing. If you have blood flow issues or infection inside the semicircular canals, we may experience vertigo or dizziness, sometimes nausea. If you have issues here, a lot of times internal hair cells inside the inner ear are damaged permanently. Then that can cause hearing loss. The symptoms include we cannot hear somebody clearly. We have to look at somebody's face to understand better. We cannot hear clearly if somebody talk to us from our bike. And sometimes we keep asking somebody to repeat their sentence. Those are symptoms that we may experience some hearing loss. Oftentimes, they are related to the damage inside inner ear. Middle ear. We know that there are three tiny bones called malleus, incus, steps. The three tiny bones are the connecting components between eardrum and the entrance of inner ear. If there is issue, there is issue with any of the bones, then our middle ear cannot 
convert the vibration of the eardrum to the fluctuation of the fluid inside the inner ear. After this failure, we cannot hear sound clearly or we cannot hear any sound at all. If that happens, we will need a middle ear reconstruction surgery to restore the bones. Okay, those are some examples between some hearing problems and their corresponding causes in the ear. As we mentioned, hair cells are tiny structures inside our inner ear. Hair cells are responsible for converting the movement of the fluid to electrical impulses of our nerves. On average, our human beings have 16,000 hair cells after birth. When we grow older and older, those hair cells die one by one. But on top of aging, loud noise can really damage hair cells permanently. Because hair cells, we don't have any way to recover. No medicine can recover. No surgery can restore hair cells once damaged. So we probably want to know that a lot of noise, especially above 85 decibel or dB, can damage some hair cells permanently. What is 85? How it's measured? What is loud? What is not loud? Here is a way to tell. Zero was zero decibel, as we mentioned. Decibel or dB is a unit for sound level or unit for sound pressure level. Zero decibel is the smallest sound a person with normal hearing can hear. 30, whisper. 40, refrigerator. 60, normal conversation, like my talking. 70, higher wire, vacuum cleaner. 75, dishwasher. <clears throat> Now it's critical tipping point, 85. 85 is a threshold that any noise, music, sound above 85 are damaging to our inner ear. So we want to avoid that. 95, subway platform, 105. That's another critical point because many cell phones and MPC players, their maximum volume is about 105 decibel. So there's research showing that teenagers have more hearing impairment than 10 years ago, the increase of hearing loss among teenagers is 12%, mostly caused by exposure to loud music. So we want to limit our time hearing those very loud music through our cell phones or players. 
we don't want to do more than 15 minutes a day. So turn down the volume. Protect the hearing before our hearing is damaged permanently. So one turn, Jet Hammer, Rock Concert, Symphony Orchestra are some examples. 120 ambulance sirens, fire truck sirens, thunder clap. We can see often the driver of a fire truck wear this hearing protection instrument because if they don't, they will experience significant hearing loss after working for some time or even become deaf. And 140, jack kicking off. 140 to 165, firecrackers, gunshotting. So those are sounds and their corresponding sound level in unit of decibel. So we can see that a lot of research scientists show us that definitely anything above 85 is dangerous. We should avoid as much as possible. A rule of thumb is that whenever in the environment you feel you have to increase your volume significantly so that the person sitting next to you can hear you, that's probably a very loud, noisy environment. You probably want to get out if you finish your task, you don't stay there too long. And even further research showing that some astronauts, after they return to Earth, they demonstrate hearing problems, all kinds. Even their Leaving space is not very noisy out there in outer space. What happened? Because even a noise is not above 85. It's not a good thing. A person living in a noise, noisy environment for 27 is not going to have something fun eventually for their years because even low dosage or low exposure time for noise below 85, for example, 65 decibel. If it's continuous 24 seven, it is still very harmful. So, we may want to avoid them as much as possible. Okay, thanks for watching my video. If you like it, you can subscribe. Bye bye.